Hello, I'm Stefan Greber, the project leader for LexD, and today I'd like to go through a fairly recently introduced feature in LexD, which should really make it a lot easier to set up and get started in a variety of environments. So as you may see here, uh, I'm on a Ubuntu 21.10 desktop installation. Uh, this is actually a LexD, LexD VM, but that's kind of besides the point here. Um, if we get a terminal, and try to talk to LexD, it is not installed. Now, at this point, if you wanted LexD, one well, of the, the things you do is snap install LexD and let the, the snap install, at which point you will get LexD and we need to add the user to the right group and then that user can start talking to it and setting it up. That's that's kind of been the way things have been for, for quite a while. Um, users of uh, Ubuntu server and some other distros don't need to actually do the installation step because it's already been uh, pre-installed. But other than that, uh, the rest pretty much remains the same. You need to make sure you're in the right group. You need to make uh, to go through LexD in it, uh, at which point that that user and anyone inside the LexD group can interact with LexD in whichever way they want, and they get to see the entire system. So at this point, my, my own user, uh, the Ubuntu user here, is not a member of the LexD group. So if they try to talk to LexD, nothing happens. They, it just fails to connect effectively. Um, just expand the terminal a bit here. There we go. So you can see that they, the user cannot access, uh, access LexD. So normally the way you then solve that is by adding the Ubuntu user to the LexD group and then making sure that they are in the right group, either by logging out and back in or by using new group. At that point, the user can actually talk to LexD, which does the initial startup. There we go. And okay, no instances, but also no storage, no network. So at that point, this this user would need to run LexD in it to set up initial network and storage. And as I said, then anyone who's inside of that LexD group will get to see the exact same thing, effectively the entire system. One thing to keep in mind at that level too is uh, full access to LexD, as my Ubuntu user has here, is effectively the same as getting root access on the system. You know, there are many, many features of LexD that lets you effectively expose a container or virtual machine to system-wide resources, which you can then use to ev elevate your privileges. So you should only ever grant full access to LexD to users you would trust with root access on the whole system itself. Uh, the same is by and large true uh, as well for things like docker and libvirt and those kind of tools like they they make it easy to share resources with the entire system but that also means that anyone who can interact with those systems can effectively have a, elevate their own privileges now that's often a limitation that's okay because many people run lexd on their own system their own developer laptop their own desktops their own home servers or cloud instances that's perfectly fine um, but if you're looking at a multi-user system or a restricted enterprise desktop, for example, this is not quite so okay because if you're taking the enterprise desktop situation, uh, an administrator in a company might be managing a large amount of company laptops and not want to give user full root access. And so having those users be able to use LexD effectively gets them the same privileges and the same then lack of control as far as the company is concerned. But so that's been something that's been kind of in our mind for a little while, and um, both the initial setup of LexD as well as uh, being able to have effectively untrusted users, being able to interact with LexD, have been things we've been we've been looking at quite closely, and that we managed to introduce with LexD four twenty two. Uh, that's done through the LexD user daemon, and it comes with effectively um, a different group that you can set up on the on the system which has a different kind of access. So in this case, uh, let me just set that up and it's, it's pretty straightforward to set up. So first of all, you need to pick a group that every user that you want unprivileged access to LexD uh, will need to belong to. In this case, I'm gonna use the users group because it's already there on the system and I believe my user out of the box is a member of it. Yes, we see here um, group 100 users. So what we need to do at that point is just do snap set lexd daemon dot user dot group equals 
use us. All right. And if we go look under the hood at what things look like. So let's the, the primary Unix socket is here. And we see it belongs to root LexD. And that's why the LexD group can, can access it. Now, there's a separate circuit here, which is under LexD-user, which now belongs to root users uh, after that snap set I did. And that means that everyone who's inside the users group can access um, that particular circuit. All right. So the particular user I'm using right now is still a member of the Lexi group. They get to see absolutely everything. They're full admin on Lexi. Nothing has changed on that regard uh, by doing that command. But now let's say we create another user. So I'm going to go inside of the users list. Users. And, uh, okay. So let's create a new user called foo to give it a password. And it's just going to be a standard user, not an administrator. So, okay, adding foo. For good measure, we're going to also add a second user called bar. Also give it a password. Also keep it as a standard user. Okay. Now, if we look at those two users, we see they're not actually a member of the users group, so just need to fix that. So adding them to users. All right. So now foo is a member of the users group, and so is bar. Now, let's go and look at what happens when those users want to interact with Flexd. So I'm going to be doing switch user. And let's do foo. Okay. Initial login. All good. So let's open a terminal. And first of all, just check the groups. So we can see we're not a member of the Lexi group. And let's run Lexi list. So this worked. In the past, this would not have worked. Um, but now with the, the new feature, it does work. And if we go look at the list of projects, that's where things get interesting. Actually, let me make this terminal a tiny bit larger. Okay. So here we can see in the project list, there's only a single project, which is called user 1001, which matches the user ID of the of user foo here. And we see that that project owns its own images, profiles, storage volumes, and it's got a description saying user restricted project for foo UID 1001. Uh, we can go a step further and look at what the configuration of the project looks like. And here we can see that it is a restricted project um, it allows for containers, including, including nested containers. It allows for disk devices, but only uh, so long as the paths that they use is under slash home slash foo, so that the user cannot pass anything that effectively does not belong to them. Uh, GPU pass through is allowed, but nothing else is. So that user will not be allowed to use a USB device, an XCHAR device, an XBlock device, or anything of the sort. They are able to pass in specific UIDs and GIDs. In this case, they're on. So UID 1001, GID 1001. And that's effectively it. Um, they also got a default profile generated. So you can see that this uh, UID map is actually set up by default in there. They are using LexDBR0 as their bridge. And they are using uh, the default storage pool for storage which is another thing that happened automatically. As I showed earlier, that LexD never got configured. I never went through LexD in it. But the first time an unprivileged user talked to it, it automatically configured. So we now have, in this case, a ZFS storage pool for storage that got set up and a basic um, LexDBR0 bridge. That means that right out of the box, that user just like logged in with a completely blank account on the system and they can immediately uh, run a Alexi launch and get a container going. No need for additional privileges, no need for running LexD in it, no need for any or not. It just works straight out of the box. And in this case, you can see the container is running and it's all good. So now I've got this user through running one container. Let's see what happens if we switch over to user bar. So I just switch user. Go to bar, 
again. And again, so all new users, so that's the first time wizard here starting. Okay, let's go look at terminal. Let's make it bigger from the start because that's going to be needed. Then if we do LXC list, that went a bit faster because this time around, LXC didn't need to do the initial setup for storage and network, it just needed to create a new project. But as we can see, it is all empty. Um, you can actually reuse, so user bar probably doesn't know what user foo is doing. Uh, so let's just say it wants to create a container of the same name. Just works. And looking at the project list here, we'll see user 1002, uh, user restricted project, same thing, exact same deal. And yeah, they're getting their own, their own container going just out of the box, everything is fine. Now, if we switch back to the initial user, which is the Ubuntu user, and that one is a member of the LXT group. Okay. So that one still doesn't see any instance running, but that's because they're looking at their own, at the default project, they're not running at the others. Uh, the difference compared to what we saw so far is that this user is a full LXT admin, so LXT project list shows all three projects. Uh, we can see that there's stuff running in the other two projects as well. And they can totally switch and go look at what's going on in one of them. So I can, they can switch and go look at user foo, for example, or at user bar, and that works perfectly fine. Or they can go back to the default project. The other difference is that a full user like this one, who's like an LXD admin, can also go and edit the project restrictions of those other users. So if they want to allow them to run some specific kind of devices or wants to put some resource limits or that kind of stuff, um, a full LXD user, member of the LXD group can do that. And that's really most of that particular feature. Um, it is, it really makes it quite nice on multi-user systems because that gives each user their own view of LXD. Um, with somewhat limited opportunity to like step on other people's feet. It is designed to be um, to be secure, like not having any obvious way to escalate privileges, get full root access on the system. It allows running unprivileged containers and virtual machines. It does not allow for privileged containers. It does not allow for any of the dangerous device types or any of that kind of stuff. But it's also flexible enough that an administrator on the system can relax those restrictions or can add their own. And that makes it for a pretty, pretty decent tool. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is as you've noticed, uh, we're dealing with a single storage pool and we're dealing with a single network. That means that those different instances are technically able to reach each other at a level two. Uh, they could steal each other's MAC address or IP address or that kind of stuff. Like it is not designed to be, to prevent you know, IP spoofing or container to container attacks within those networks. If you wanted to do that, you could create separate networks and then assign those to specific projects to improve that security. Um, similarly, there's no resource limit out of the box. So just like a normal user on an Ubuntu system can totally run the system out of disk space, memory, processes, you name it. The same is true of their containers. There's no restriction being put in place there. Um, that's again something that can be configured by the administrator. Uh, you can totally go and edit the generated projects to then add resource limits to them to avoid this. Um, but yeah, that's effectively this feature. Uh, whether it's on the desktop or in a cloud instance or on a server, if you're dealing with a multi user environment, setting this new property and running LXT in that restricted user mode uh, can be really, a really, really useful tool. Um, I think it makes a, a ton of sense, um, especially in the enterprise world where you might want to have, um, you know, give company laptops or the like or company restricted systems to users that do need to do more advanced tasks, uh, that do need to occasionally install packages or potentially um, install SDKs like, you know, NVIDIA CUDA or those kind of things, which you don't want them to do directly on the system because that might compromise its integrity to a sense, um, but it's it would be perfectly fine to do inside of a container. And with this, you totally can. A user could, um, like out of the box, is allowed to access GPUs. So it, the user out of the box can create a container, can pass in the GPU into the container, 
and can then um, install something like the NVIDIA CUDA SDK or some machine learning machine learning type tooling and run it inside the container. And as far as the administrator is concerned, no packages were actually installed on the system. Uh, the whole system remains perfectly nice and clean. And if something goes wrong with that container, it's very easy to delete. So that's it for this feature. I hope uh, this is going to be useful to, to some of you. If you've got any questions, you can leave them down below in the description, in the comment section, or you can file, like open a topic on our community forum. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.